Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I want to go behind the scenes of Blocks vs. Zombies and show you how I actually go about spawning the zombies. This will be a part of a series where I show you all about how I make, how I made Blocks vs. Zombies and how all the parts of it work. Alright, so the zombies all come from this cave. Now I'm going to use some commands here and actually start spawning some zombies. So, um, in order to do that, I have an objective called Basic Zombie. I'm going to set that to 1. I'm actually going to set a bunch of objectives to 1. Zombie Tank. Let's go Zombaby. Oops. Zombaby. Uh, zombie Knight. And Invis Zombie. Okay, so now we're going to start spawning all the different types of zombies. Uh, I don't see any zombie babies actually. Did I mistype that? Hmm. I'm not sure why there aren't any babies spawning. Oh, there we go. There are. So you can see we're getting a bunch of zombies. Now these guys all spawn with different kinds of armor. You'll notice they have enough uh, enough range to see the villagers that are hiding down underneath the map, and that's what they're tracking when they try and attack. Uh, one fell in and I lost, so. Uh, I have to respawn. But, yeah, so they have a bunch of different properties, so I have to use mob spawners to spawn those guys in. So I'm going to show you how I went about doing that, and how I controlled which zombies spawned at which time. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to go over to where all the logic behind the game is, and that's right around x equals 0, z equals 0. Alright, here we are. Uh, over the course of this series, I'm going to be coming back here a lot. Uh, this is the spawn platform where you spawn in when you... Uh, when the game starts. And because the world spawn is right here, uh, all these chunks around that spawn stay loaded all the time no matter what, as long as there's somebody logged into the server. And I use that feature a lot to make sure that all of these contraptions that I have sitting around here are running all the time as long as anybody's logged in. So, uh, if I come over here, this is the area where we can see how the zombie spawning works. Now, you may recognize these things as my structure spawner filters, or the results of my structure spawner filter. Uh, if I come down here, we can take a look. Uh, spawn night three, and this one says, oh wait, there's no sign here anymore because it got deleted. Uh, so basically, if I push this button, it'll activate the spawn night three fil uh, dispenser, what, I guess, spawner is going to get really confusing. This one will delete it. Okay, so there's some other circuitry here. Uh, this command block is testing for a player with a score of Zombie Knight equal to 3 or greater. Okay, so there's a bunch of these things. Uh, this one is Zombie Knight 2, and I'm, I used N-I-T-E, but it's actually K-N-I-G-H-T. So it's like, like it's spelled here. So there's three of these for each different type of zombie. Here's Tank 3, 2, Tank 1, uh, we got baby, one two three, or three two one, uh, invis zombie three two one, and then basic zombie three two and one. So, and I'm using a little hopper filter here uh, to to do this test for. So this test for is basically looking for a player with a score of basic zombie that's at least one. And when it finds a player like that, um, let me actually go ahead and set my score. Uh, so basic zombie one. Watch the redstone here. Watch the comparator coming out of that command block. So that turns on, and we saw that this thing did a little thing. Now when I set this back to zero, it's going to turn off, and and this one will do some stuff. Okay. So what what's going on here? In order to see, we're going to come down here. Now this is a big dark area. I have a big platform in the sky that's making sure that there's a light level of zero here, and that's important. Now, if I come all the way over here to the end of this little balance beam, and you probably can't see this. Let me just grab a torch, I guess, for a sec. Um, it says basic zombie, and there's three spots. Uh, right here it says invis zombie. Okay, so if I go ahead and set my score to one again, you'll see, after a minute, a little zom zombie spawner appears here. Let me light it up so you can see. So this is what spawns the basic zombie way over off in the distance, I think it's actually this direction, way off in the distance in that cave. And this spawner has a player detection radius of 32,000, so it can detect the players even though they're a thousand blocks away over where the game is. 
because the game is at the x equals 1000 coordinate. So if I take that torch away, this is going to spawn a basic zombie every 5 seconds. Now when I set my basic zombie score to 0, this is going to despawn using that structure deleter. Here we go. So it kind of spawns in a half slab, makes the zombie spawner fall onto it, and it deletes it. Now if I set my score of basic zombie to 3, it's going to spawn in 3 of these things. So there we go, we got all three. So now each of these is going to spawn a basic zombie every five seconds. And if I set my score back to zero, it'll delete all of those in a second. There we go. Uh, same thing for, let's see, I like zombaby. I just like that word. Zombaby. Uh, set it to three, and we'll get three of these spawners. Uh, there we go. I was concerned for a second there. So we get three of those spawners, and then when I set it back to zero, it'll delete all those spawners. So I can use the scoreboard to, to control all these things. Now, the reason it's it's creating three when I set my score to three is because there's three of these structure spawners. Each one's looking for a different minimum value. So we have spawn baby three. This looks like this looks for a score of three or more. This one looks for a score of two or more, and then this one looks for a score of one or more. And so when I set my score to three, all of these three things are going to trigger. And that's why I get those three spawners. Now, let me talk about how I actually control the timing of when those things appear. Because throughout the game, basically those spawners are being created and deleted. And that's what this yellow platform is for. So there's a command block here. And this is all these command blocks control the spawns. And actually some of these are useless, but I'll get to that in a sec. This command block here tests for a player that's in game state one. Uh, game state is a scoreboard objective that I created just to track if the game is currently running. So if there's a player in game state one, then this is going to trigger. Now, let me actually put myself game state one. Okay. So now we can see that that's what starts the game. And we've got a little clock here. And the clock takes one second to proceed. Basically, it ticks on every one second. And that's what triggers this. So as that's going, it adds one to the time score for all players. Uh, now, if I do a scoreboard players, oh, sorry, scoreboard objectives, set display, sidebar, time, we can see the time ticking up once a second. Now, if we look at these guys, these are looking for a player in game state one and it's looking for a score of time that's at least zero and since my time is 25 you can see on the scoreboard on the right my time score is 25 this this comparator is on this one looks for a time score that's at least 60 so that means one minute into the game this thing is going to turn on and stay on similarly this one over here looks for a time of 120 and each of these happens in one minute increments and there's 20 of them or maybe 21 for uh, for the duration of the entire game, and so so this one turned on at the beginning of the game. Now, what did that trigger? It triggered a thing that said twenty minutes remaining. It also triggered the play sound that triggers the Ender Dragon growl that you hear at the beginning of the game, and it also triggers a bunch of these command blocks. You can see all these repeaters are on, and it triggered all of those command blocks. And so if I look at this command block, okay, that was not the right one. If I look at this command block, it's setting a score of basic zombie to one. So it's going to spawn one of those spawners, like I was showing over in the black area over there. Uh, it also sets um, zo invis zombie to zero, ba zombie baby to zero, zombie tank to zero, zombie knight to zero, and then these are all just, these don't actually do anything. Uh, they were there in case I decided to add more types of zombies, or maybe in the future if I decide to add more. Um, so now 19 minutes is remaining, so all these guys triggered. You can see all these repeaters are now on. And you can see that's what this one says. Uh, it also has uh, sets the score of basic zombie to 2. So now there are going to be two of those basic zombie spawners. All these other ones are still set to 0. When we get to eight, 18 minutes remaining, we're going to see this is going to get set back to 1 and the zombie is going to set, get set to 1. And that's why, if you play the game, when 18 minutes are remaining, you start to see the zombies uh, start spawning. And so there's a big grid of these, and as time proceeds, different things get set to different values. At 12 minutes remaining, for instance, there's one basic zombie, zero invis zombies, three zombies, 
and I think probably zero tanks and zero knights. So, and then in the in the final round over here, when there's one minute remaining, uh, the time is 11:40. Uh, that means that's just 60 seconds before the 20 minute thing is up. Uh, all of these things get set to three. So there's three of each type of spawner, and uh, and that's that's kind of the end of the game. So if I come down here, we can actually see those spawners. So we can see there were the two spawners here. Uh, those were the two basic zombie spawners, and in a moment, um, when it ticks over to 120 seconds on the time score, we're going to see one of these despawn and one of the baby spawners uh, be created. So that'll happen in 10 seconds. And uh, yeah, that's that's what controls the game. So throughout the entire game, these things are spawning and despawning. And here we go. So here we go. 18 minutes remaining. That one despawns, and this one spawns. Pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm really happy with this system. It's very very flexible, very customizable. Uh, when I do end up creating a single player version of the game, which I think I probably will do, uh, it's going to be easy to just modify these guys in order to make the game a little bit easier, because I can just make fewer zombies spawn whenever I want. So very very cool system for doing that, and uh, and and pretty flexible. Now it's it's a little bit difficult to add more types of zombies because. I have to create new spawners over here, which takes a little bit of time and, and organization to do. Uh, and then I have to use these spawners to create the structure spawners above and put in all the circuitry to make sure that they're going to spawn and despawn with the score values. So adding new types of zombies is a little bit of a pain, but it's not the worst. All right, so we're about to hit 180 seconds, so we should start to see a new uh, zombie profile here. Let's see what happens. I'm not actually sure. Okay, yep, looks like the baby despawns, and we start to get the zombie knights. That's right. And then I think the next one is invis zombies, maybe, but I'm going to leave it there. So that's how all the zombie spawning works in Blocks vs. Zombies. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.